What's up everybody? Trying something a little bit different today. I am up in my garage where I usually rehearse my music and I'm trying to kind of set this thing up so I can record here. It's a little more controlled. There's a little bit less noise and so we'll see how this one goes. Before I get started with the actual topic of today's video, I want to thank the patrons. I want to invite you to join the Patreon group. Uh, like I've said before, there are one-on-one -on -one video lessons for those who subscribe at the highest tier and those who hit me up to schedule them. <laughs> and, you know, everybody else gets access to videos like this one early. So all the tutorial videos I'll be posting a few days early on in that Patreon group. I do offer discounts on collage skateboards, gear. I do offer different types of videos like just kind of some of my musings about skating and about like what it takes sometimes to accomplish what you want on your skateboard, whether it is a really difficult trick that you're trying that you can't break through, whether it's dealing with distractions when you're skating on the streets, uh, how to stop yourself from feeling the fatigue of trying and trying and trying a trick over and over and not getting it. and to kind of keep yourself from falling out of love with skateboarding. So if you're interested in stuff like that, consider joining the Patreon group. Today's video is about nollies. And the reason I'm making this video is because I was at, I believe it was Lincoln Park Skate Park the other day, and I was having a conversation with someone about nollies. We we're both talking about how nollies were our first intro into switch tricks. Actually, I know exactly who it was. It was Nigel Alexander. I shot a piece with him and it was at Lake Street Skate Park, my local skate park here. Um, and we were just talking about nollies and how it is the best intro to skating switch and how it's a really fun and easy way to get started out. Now, first let's go over the nollie. What is a nollie? A nollie is, if you think of your stance, so I'm goofy footed, right? So if I roll, normal with my right foot in front, do an ollie, I roll goofy footed. Now, let's say I roll up and do a rock to fakie on a ramp. I come back fakie. I'm now rolling with my left foot in front of me. That's considered switch, regular footed for anybody who rolls that way normally, right? So if I'm rolling that way and I place what's usually my back foot in front of the board, what's, in, what's the tail, but it's now in front, and I do an ollie, it's a fakey ollie, right? So if we're to take this and apply this when we're skating in our normal stance, so for me, I'm skating goofy footed, I'm rolling forward, I place my right foot on the nose of the board, and I were to do the motion of an ollie there, that is a nollie. It's a nose ollie. Pretty simple, right? Now this was the first way that I learned to skate switch, and the reason is, it was too difficult for me to push switch. So I couldn't really grasp the switch ollie. It just kind of threw my brain for a loop. Now that I've been teaching skate lessons, I have a way to kind of fix that with my students. I have them straddle the board, meaning put one foot on either side of the board, face toward the nose of their board. And I have them then place whatever foot they normally put in front up on the board and push like they normally do. I stop them and then I have them straddle the board again, and then I have them place the opposite foot in front, and then I have them try to push that way. And I basically break it down the same way that I teach beginners to push in the first place. Now the other thing is, when I was learning to skate, I didn't have any skate parks. So once I started skating skate parks, I realized how much easier it is to get comfortable rolling around switch if you just roll up a quarter pipe and then come back down fakey. But I didn't have the luxury of a skate park. So the first way that I learned was a nollie. And I'm gonna break it down really simply for you here. So you should already be able to ollie and do an assortment of basic tricks before you try this. I'd say before you start trying the nollie, you should already know how to shove it and probably a front side or back side 180. You should be able to roll up to a curb and do a nose stall and drop back down. Probably be able to do rock to fakies and drop in on a quarter pipe as well. Now that you've got all that and you're pretty comfortable, what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna take a push because it's not a nollie if you're not rolling. If you're not rolling, it's just a stationary switch ollie. Um, so you should take a small push, very, very slow to start. And when I talk about ollies, I talk about the ollie box. 
That's that place where your back foot is on the tail, only your toes and the ball of your foot are touching the tail. Your back foot is anywhere from half an inch to an inch from the edge of the tail. And your big toe on your back foot is probably a couple of inches from your bolts. So we're going to take that Ollie box position and we're gonna put our front foot in that same position. Now, since the nose is normally longer and I'm aware there are twin tailed boards, but I'm going to continue with these instructions as if we're skating the typical popsicle shaped board where the nose is a little bit longer. And the nose is a little bit longer for good reason because typically that helps you with your nollies, which is another reason why nollies are a little bit easier for people typically. Also, you're used to pushing and stabilizing the board with that front leg. So your front leg is actually tends to be a little bit stronger just because you've had to keep the board straight while you pushed with the back foot. But onto the trick, we're gonna have our front foot in that kind of ollie box position on the nose. Our heels are gonna be up off the board. If you've watched my video about keeping your heels up, you'll know why. And so we're going to crouch like we're gonna ollie. So our arms are gonna be up, our knees are gonna start slightly bent and we're gonna squat down pretty low. Now, once we've reached as low as we wanna squat, we are then gonna start to rise and as soon as we start to rise from our squat, that's when we wanna push our foot into the nose. Now, it's very important that you don't try to nose dive because when you try to push straight down on the nose and you're rolling forward, that's gonna cause you to fall forward. And also, it's not gonna allow you for great control. I am able to nollie pretty high, nearly as high as I can ollie. And what made me able to start to bring my nollies up higher was this little tip. When I'm doing a nollie, if this is my, if, if this is my nose, I'm not pushing down on the nose. I'm actually going to push forward and down. And then once the board hits the ground, I'm gonna push forward in this scooping motion and pull back. So that's what we're gonna to wanna to do. We're going to squat, and then as we start to stand up, we're going to push the nose forward and down at the same time. Once the nose makes contact, we're gonna then try to bring the nose back with us. We're gonna sl be sliding our back foot the same way we would for an ollie, but we're gonna be using the front foot in tandem with the back foot to kind of scoop the board off the ground and we're gonna pull our knees up to our chest. Now, if you're able to accomplish this down and forward motion with the nose and pull it back as you're sliding your back foot, you're going to be able to pull the board up towards your chest with your knees a lot more effectively. And this is the tactic that I employ when I'm doing my nollies and especially when I'm trying to nollie up over something or onto something high. Like recently, I did the highest nollie crook I'd ever done over at Echo Park Lake Skate Park and I really had to rely on this pushing down and forward technique. And I also employ this when I ollie. When I ollie, I don't press my tail straight down. I actually press down and back a bit. And that helps me gain more control over the board. This is just something that a lot of people develop as they become better skaters, as they start having to control their ollies more. And a lot of people don't even notice that they do it. I noticed that I was doing it a long time ago and started focusing on doing it and it's really helped with my pop. So all the people in the comments that ask me how I pop so high, using that kind of scooping, shoveling motion when I pop either an ollie, a nollie, a switch, or a fakie ollie, that has helped me gain height and it's helped me immensely. Like, um, if you're able to really master this, it will help you pop much higher. So once we've reached the height that we want with our nollie, and in the beginning, you're not gonna be nollying very high, I know this, but I'm, I'm trying to speak to the absolute beginners with the trick, and I'm also trying to speak with people that are a step above that. Like anywhere above this, when you're nollying like I am, you don't need my advice anyway, so I'm speaking to the guys down here and the guys in the middle here. If you're up here, well, you probably already have your own heuristic for these tricks. But that's how I nollie. Once you're up at the height, you're gonna keep your knees bent and just let gravity push you down to the ground. 
So let's talk about some good applications for Nolly. Um, one of the first things that I started uh, enjoying with the Nolly was Nolly Frontside 5050s, right? Um, and these were actually a little bit easier than the Nolly, than, than regular 5050s for me sometimes. Uh, just depending on how high or how low the obstacle was. Like I found that with lower obstacles, once my Ollie started to get higher, it became a little more challenging because I'd over pop them a lot of times. And in the first few years of skating, you don't have very much control. So when you over pop something, you're usually going to overshoot it and end up inside the ledge. But I found that with nollies, I could nolly into those smaller ledges pretty easily. So once you have the nollies down, you should start trying to nolly onto a 50-50 on a curve. And once you know you're able to get onto a 50-50, now you know you're able to nolly up onto the curve. So you should start trying to nolly onto the curve. And my tip for that is don't start off trying to just roll straight on and nolly up onto the curve. You're gonna clip. What I did was I would roll at an angle, a front side angle first, and I'd be at about a 45 degree angle at a good speed, and I'd nolly up onto the curb like that. And similar to my video about like nose slides and how you start out at an angle and you slowly take that angle down until you're parallel with the ledge, you do the same thing with your nollie. You slowly take away that angle, so start out at 45, Go all the way out until you're able to go up at 90 degrees. And when you are trying to ollie, nollie up onto, let's say, a curb or up over anything, you have to realize that you have to pop considerably early compared to your regular ollie over an obstacle because you're now popping with the front. So you need to allow time for you to clear that obstacle with your nose after you've popped, which means you have to pop earlier. And to compensate for this, you're gonna have to go faster. That's why starting out at a slight angle or a 45 degree angle or whatever, whichever angle you're comfortable with, is gonna make it easier because you're gonna be able to clear the obstacle, initially the curb or the parking block or whatever it is, a lot faster that way I mean, I'm sorry, without having to go a lot faster this way. And then once you work your way to nollying straight onto something, then you're going to be comfortable. You're going to be able to go faster. You're going to have a little bit of mastery of the trick. Uh, once you can nollie 50-50 and, and then you can nollie up onto the curb, sky's the limit. The, one of the first things that I learned with this is how to nollie and then manual. Nolly nose manuals came a lot longer because those require a lot more control, but just nollying into a regular manual, I was able to do uh, pretty quickly. And the other thing that's nice is when you're skating rails, you can start trying nolly lip slides. Now I actually learned how to nolly lip slide on a flat bar before I learned to lip slide a flat bar because ollieing and getting your weight to go up over the obstacle is more difficult than nollying because when you nolly, the axis of your nose the nose being the axis that you're turning on, it makes it easier to accomplish that rotation onto the lip slide. Some of the pitfalls that I experienced with those nollie lip slides were standing up too tall while I was doing the nollie frontside 180. So just make sure you maintain the crouched position that I mentioned in the earlier part of this video about the nollies where you're squatting down as low as you can and as soon as you start to stand up, that's where you want to trigger that push. There's obviously a delay. I believe it's about a 0.35 second delay from when you start something in your mind to when it actually happens in your body. So most skate tricks happen in less than a second. So that is actually a significant delay. And yeah, then you can have fun with it. Sky's the limit. One of my favorite Nolly tricks now is Nolly Crook. Nolly Nose was one of my favorites. You can start trying those. You can. I started out with the Nolly Nose slides the same way that I started with the regular ones. I started with the stall, and then I slowly started to come at the ledge at more and more of an angle until I was parallel with it. And then sky's the limit. So Nolly is just a really fun trick that you can learn. Um, and then you can start trying nollie shove it, nollie pop shove it. You can start your 180s with the nollie. It was really a lot easier for me to understand rotating my shoulders first before popping with the nollie than it was with regular 180s. Um, and that's why like a lot of tricks like the nollie backside 360, most people learn those before they learn how to do a regular backside 360 because it's just easier to make the rotation happen when the axis that you're turning on is in front of you as opposed to it being behind you, you having to create force, put it into the board and work with the momentum when you're popping off of the back foot. That's a lot more difficult for people in the beginning. 
and it becomes easier over time. But one of the ways that you can help to facilitate learning this is to start them out Nolly. So I hope that helps. I hope this makes sense to you guys. It's a really easy trick that you can add to your arsenal that's going to help you have more fun. And it's also going to help you understand your skateboard a little bit better and how it works. For some reason, doing something off the front foot has always made it easier for me to understand. I don't know why this is. I can't quantify it. I can't fully explain it, but it's how it worked for me. Maybe it works that way for you guys. Thank you for watching and enjoy skateboarding. I was trying to earlier. I actually usually have about five lessons on Saturday mornings and it rained here in Southern California yesterday, which was Saturday. So I didn't get to teach them. We were trying to make up one of my lessons today because it looked like it wasn't going to rain as much as the forecast had predicted before. Got to the skate park, taught about 20 minutes of the lesson, starts raining on us. So uh, I came home and started to film this. I won't get to skate, but I know it's a lot worse in some other parts of the world compared to how it is in Southern California. So I won't complain too much. Uh, later, guys.